Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God on this June the 21st, 2023. And you know what? It has been raining, raining all night. I think I woke up about 4.50 this morning to thunder and rain. So I pray that uh, all those who are in the path of the storm, I believe it's called Brett, in different areas, I pray for your safety. Use wise counsel and uh, be safe out there. We're praying for each and every one of you. I want to kick off today, I want to ask a very, very important question. Who is feeding you? Where are you being fed from? And I'm thinking about this foundationally from the Word of God. Where are we being fed? Who is feeding you? Where do we go to receive what we need? And when I say what we need, I'm talking about positive encouragement. Sometimes it is met with some constructive criticism. So there is a balance. I'm not talking about dealing with anyone who is tearing down your self-esteem with that type of motive. I'm talking about who is feeding you and where, where are we going to eat? I do believe in encouraging yourself. I do believe in that. I believe in encouraging yourself, motivating yourself. Do not wait for anyone to come along to encourage you. Do not wait for anyone to come along and motivate you. If you are not satisfied with your current circumstances, you have to make some changes. It is not for anyone else to come along and make the changes for you. So search your life. Look over your life. Look over your, your current situation and decide which areas you want to improve in. Pray. Prayer is so important because we might think we are headed in the right decision or that we are in a situation it might appear to be good, but that's not the best that God has for you. And once again, if you look around your life, if you look around the room and you are not satisfied with what you see in the room, in the room of your life, if you are not satisfied, it is up to you to make some changes. Now, I am big on encouraging yourself, motivating yourself. I am also not a fan of constant complaints, not a fan of constant complaints at all, because constant complaints tells me that the individual who is complaining is not ready for change. You are satisfied with complaining. So for myself personally, if I keep complaining about a thing, I can either make a positive step towards to change what I'm complaining about, or if I do nothing, I am satisfied with where I am. We can't have both. We cannot complain and yet say, but I'm okay, no. If you are not happy, if you are not satisfied, if you are interested in uh, obtaining more in your life, 
if you are interested in growing in your relationship with Christ, do something about it. Spend more time in the Word of God, growing in your faith, growing in your obedience. Increase your prayer life, time in the presence of the Lord. Read, read the Word of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to direct you on material to read that will help grow you in your knowledge in Christ. But it comes from a desire. And sometimes in the midst of life, this desire will come that you want more. Examine that thought, where it's coming from, and do something about it. I just want to know where we're being fed from. Who's feeding us? I'm reminded by the prophet Elijah. And when he ran for his life from Jezebel, because Elijah had done what he was instructed to do. He killed the prophets of Baal, which were false prophets. And Jezebel was now after his life. And he was instructed to rest. He was awakened and told to eat and to drink. He was being fed from on high. Today's terms is he went on a sabbatical. He took some time off. Uh, last week we did a segment called pause break. But in that pause break, he was being fed spiritually. We have to be fed spiritually. We have to become careful about the sources that feed into us. So if the source that is feeding, and I'm walking this carefully because I want to say it correctly. I want to say it spiritually correctly. If the source that is feeding you does not want you to actually grow, that is the wrong source. Because every area that I feed in, that I feed, that I pour out encouragement spiritually, I'm praying for you. I want you to grow in the areas of your life that God has ordained. I want you to flourish. I want you to produce fruit for the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes we come across individuals that feed you, but yet they don't want you to grow. They want you, they want to feed you only enough to survive for the benefit of them. So we must be careful about who feeds us. Sometimes a spirit of manipulation is feeding. And when I say a spirit of manipulation, on one hand, they encourage you, but when you start to grow outside of their grasp, they criticize you and tear you down. That's a spirit of manipulation. They never really had any intention of you growing. Sometimes individuals could feed you, but their motive is really to cripple you so that you are dependent and handicapped, uh, that you, you have to come to them only. That's not proper feeding. It's not a good source. That's why I say start with the foundation of prayer, communing with God. He is our source. He is everything that we need. Get up.
get up, my brothers and sisters, get up from that place of battling low self-esteem and depression. And I know that many are going through some very, very tough times and it seems as if all is against you. But start with some little things. Uh, get up and refresh yourself. Start with prayer in the morning. Commune with God. Talk to God. Shift the atmosphere around you. If the atmosphere around you, where you are, is uh, melancholy and it is uh, dreary and it is no peace and you feel mm, pressure, you can shift the atmosphere. Have prayer. Read a scripture. Something that will encourage your heart. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, that is talking about how much God loves you and I. Read scriptures pertaining to uh, all things. And we know that all things will turn for the good for them who loved him. For those who are called according to his purpose. Uh, read scriptures of that abundance. Uh, read scriptures such as, in the day of trouble, call upon me and I will answer thee. Begin to encourage yourself. Get up out of the bed. Mm -hmm. Go take a shower. Uh, do you have a favorite scent? Um, lather yourself, pamper yourself. This is, you have to start within. You have to start taking care of you. Feed yourself. And I know that we cannot feed anyone else from an empty place. So we must begin with ourselves. And the best place to start is in prayer, in the word of God. Encourage yourself. Get up. From that place you do not have to stay in that broken place you do not have to stay in that dark place you can get up you can rise at, because uh, listen weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning speak to yourself speak to the situation and say I won't always be in this place. I, I'm going to rise because I have a father which is in heaven and he has great plans for me. He says, I know the thoughts and plans that I think towards thee to give thee a good and an expected end. And so he even told the children of Israel and we take that word for ourselves today that although you are going through some hard times, this is not the expected end that I have for you. I, I have a plan and I have a purpose for you. So you have to tell yourself, God has a plan for me. It's not always going to be a time of trouble. I won't always go through a period of lack. I, I, I won't always I have low self-esteem. I, I won't always be alone. And listen, he tells us also in his word, he said, uh, uh, I will be with you even until the end of time. Lo, I am with you. God is with you. But you have to start feeding yourself. You have to get up and encourage yourself. Get up from there. Don't lay there and, and slumber and be dreary. Get up. Get out of the bed. Literally make the bed up. You know what? Before you make the bed up, pull those sheets off. Put on some fresh linen. You got some music playing, some worship music. Shift the atmosphere. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Tell you the joy of the Lord is my strength, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He also tells us over in John 
14. I know many read it at uh, funeral services, but it is a word for every day. It is a word of encouragement that says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe also in me. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. He's going to prepare a place just for me. And if it were not so, he would not say it. So encourage yourself. So get up. I hear the Holy Spirit say, get up. Get up from there and take the sheets off the bed and put on some fresh linen. And you got the word of God playing through song and instrument. Take yourself a shower. Somebody listening to this today or maybe even down the line and they might think that, oh, that's common. I do that every day. But somebody is going through something so detrimental. The, the enemy has weighed them down with such a spirit of depression and low self-esteem that it's hard for them to even rise and get out of the bed. You have no idea that there are some people that actually sit in darkness because the enemy has tricked them to believe that that is where they belong. But I came by to tell you that God has great plans for you. He has something in store for you that he loves you and he has a great and expected end for you. And, and listen, joy this joy, this joy that he has for you, no one can take it away. The love of Christ that he has for you, nobody can take it away. Nobody can take God's love from you. So even if people come and they take back their love, they take back their friendship, they take back their relationship. They take back their word. What God has spoken concerning you, no one can take it away. In fact, he will never take his word away from you. He is a God. He changes not. His love does not change. He doesn't like the sin that we do, but he loves us. And that will never ever change. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning into the balance of life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. My word that we want to share with you all on today is just a question. Who is feeding you? Who's feeding you? Look at your connections. Where's your encouragement coming from? Let it start from you. Do not wait for anyone to come along to encourage you because they might get busy. They might not get a chance to text you. It could be their intention, but they don't actually do it. And then you are waiting around. And that's what the enemy wants you to think. The enemy wants you to feel isolated. He wants to tell you that nobody loves you, that no one cares, that you are all alone. But you're not all alone. You have a Father which is in heaven. You have Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, as your Savior, your Messiah. You have the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you, to help you. You are not alone. So as you are getting up, refresh yourself, comb your hair. Yep. Moisturize your skin. Pick yourself up. Begin to live again. Revive what has been lost. Revive what the enemy tried to take away. Revive what the enemy tried to kill. Revive it. Get up and do something for yourself today. Yep. 
if you like coffee, like I do, make, your, make yourself a nice cup of coffee. Enjoy it. If you like tea, enjoy it. But get up. Get yourself dressed. Comb your hair. Nourish yourself. Despise not the day of small beginnings. Get up. Start small. Take baby steps. But get up and begin to live. I am also reminded of the prophet Ezekiel, where in the spirit he was taken to see a valley of dry bones. And the voice of the Lord asked him a question, will these bones live again? Will these dry bones live again? And Ezekiel answered the voice of the Lord and said, thou knowest all things. Ask yourself, can I live again? Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord, can I live again? He knows all things. This is not your expected end. Get some fresh air. Step outside. Some have been in the house for so long. You don't come out because of depression. But we are praying today against the spirit of depression. I pray that your mind is being renewed. That's right. That's the way to live. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed. That's over in Romans, the 12th chapter, second verse. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And yesterday, we shared 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So every time a negative thought hits your mind, every time the enemy says, uh, you can't do it, you're not worth it, nobody loves you, cast that thought down. He is a lie. You are worth it. You are worth it. Christ gave his life for you because you are worth it. The shedding of his blood was all for you. You are worth it. The sacrifice that God made is because you, you're worth it. And the good work that he started in you, he is faithful to complete it. He is going to be with you until he is finished. Get up and encourage yourself. Mm -hmm. Begin to speak positive to yourself. So we have graduated. We're thinking good thoughts. Now I want you to start speaking positive to yourself. Mm -hmm. This is long before you interact with anybody else. Speak positive to yourself. I am love. I am the apple of God's eye. I am above and not beneath. I am blessed and not cursed. The work of my hands are blessed. I have spiritual gifts and talents from my Father. I am a gift to the kingdom of heaven. I am not worthless. I was not a mistake. Speak good to you. You know, a plant will die if it is not properly nourished. If it doesn't receive the proper sunlight, if it needs it. If we fail to water it, 
it will become so dehydrated that it cannot breathe and then there is no life. So imagine yourself as a plant. Seeds have been planted. The seed of life has already been planted in you. But each plant must get what they need. Now the plant has some abilities to survive on its own, but it relies on a source to come and provide it with some water. Now, if the plants are outside, and sometimes it all depends on the type of plant, when it rains, people will put the plants outside to get some of the rain from heaven. It's the same way with your life. Get into the rain from heaven, which is your time in prayer, your time in the world, growing in your faith, allowing the Holy Spirit to bring back to your remembrance what has already been spoken. And you will begin to see a transformation in your life. And listen, this is the day by day process. It is. What I am learning is this. We see what people want us to see. So when we see individuals on the television, hear them on the radio, as with myself, we see the good pictures the smile has been presented for that moment but nobody really knows what goes on behind closed doors nobody we all have to start from a place and encourage ourselves nobody is exempt and we feed ourselves so that when we are presented, we're full. We do what it takes spiritually. I want us to do what it takes spiritually in a good, healthy way. So oftentimes I have said here that I ask the Holy Spirit how to take care of me. I am his vessel. I am the vessel of God. And I want to know how I am supposed to take care of his vessel. Not my way, but his way. Mm -hmm. Show me how to feed this vessel. Show me how to nourish and take care of this vessel. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he lifts up a standard. When thoughts of doubt and low self-esteem try to creep in, because they do, the Holy Spirit comes in and reminds me of God's word. He, he comes in, he quickens me to get up from that place and don't allow that spirit, the dust of that spirit, to follow me. Don't settle in the dust. Get up from that place. Move. Get up. Shake yourself. Shift the atmosphere. We're going to share more tomorrow. Because there is more for us to share. Who is feeding you? Where are you receiving words of encouragement? Start with yourself. The Holy Spirit is going to lead and guide you. Ask him. I believe he'll do it. Listen, that's coming uh, to a close for today. We're about to close out for today, but I just wanted to say that I love you without measure simply because I believe in the potential of each and every one of you. 
I'll see you tomorrow. Lord's willing, have a blessed day.